We're here, the Arnold Classic. For a few years now, I've heard about this festival from friends who had gone, and now I get to experience it as a card-carrying member of the press. It's a multi-day extravaganza of demonstrations and competitions, culminating in the biggest, most prestigious bodybuilding show in the world, second only to the Mr. Olympia. Although I'm sure Arnold would have something to say about that assessment. My task is to cover it all for Kai's DVD. And in order to do that, I've put together a crew consisting of me, my brother, and my girlfriend Elle, who, even though not a pro, is a very good photographer and videographer. As soon as we get there, we grab a quick meal at the hotel restaurant. You never know who you'll see there. You know, it's funny, dude. I mean, you look at me, he's still, he's still not a, he's not a small guy. But you never look at him. Yeah, he could be Mr. Olympia. You just can't judge potential. You really can't. No. Would you look at him in that shirt? No. Mr. Olympia material. Not at all. Someday. Not at all. We then go back to my hotel room to plan how we will attack this project. I send Dave out alone with one of my cameras so he can cover the expo, while Elle and I visit with the athletes and cover the exhibitions. The Arnold Classic Expo is held in a vast convention hall and is an opportunity for manufacturers of anything bodybuilding or fitness related to give the public a chance to sample their wares. Unfortunately, the footage I get back from Dave is sparse. He gets recognized as that guy from Raising the Bar several times and ends up schmoozing and shaking hands more often than shooting. I had been to the Arnold several years prior to that and I was just me mingling among the millions of dudes with ILS, imaginary lat syndrome and their little bags of goodies and shit. Then all of a sudden I was there and I seriously couldn't walk 10 feet without somebody saying, hey, you're that dude. You're the dude on that RTD thing, man. Uh, six foods at work, yeah. So it was pretty cool. The footage Dave does shoot tends to be rather one-dimensional and reflects pretty much where his interests lie. Oh well, so much for my crack crew. There were way too many boobies and hineys there. I couldn't focus. The following night at the pre-judging, I'm excited but overwhelmed, running back and forth from the warm-up area to my spot on the side of the stage, trying to capture it all. I got a good idea of Dave's ability behind the camera from watching his expo footage, so I just give him a press pass and let him observe. It was pretty cool, I have to admit that, to be back there and to be among the best bodies on the planet, but you have to remember one thing. I had been grooming my brain my entire life to be back there. So I wasn't starstruck by any stretch of the imagination. I always felt that I belonged back there. I belonged back there pumping up with them. So although it was pretty cool to be back there, I realized the only reason I was back there was because you had filmed Raising the Bar and that it had been so successful. And that's why I was there. And conversely, <clears throat> I was the reason you were back there too. So that was pretty cool, but um, it wasn't the kind of thing where it's like, this is so cool. It's like, uh, the way that I got here was not the way I had planned to get here. I send Elle through the hidden passageway under the stage to the press pit to cover the show itself. I feel confident that we will get what we need to tell this story. Kai, of course, wins the show. And the athletes retreat to the backstage area where the usual feeding frenzy of reporters for the various bodybuilding websites descends on them. But I hang back and just shoot the melee. Very rarely does the post-game interview reveal anything worthwhile. That's why I don't do them. The athlete, barraged by the same questions over and over, and still a few hours or days away from being able to process what this win or loss really means, resorts to the athlete locker room interview cliches we are all familiar with. I was lucky enough to have access to Kai privately, after the fact, 
after he'd had a chance to go on the forums, see the pictures, and think about what he needed to do next. And once again, it yielded results. These are things that I prayed for. These are things that I consciously have worked for. And because you were continuing to ask for and expect for the delivery of these things, and you were committed to continuing to work to manifest these things, then it makes it a little bit easier to accept, understand, and expect the outcome that we saw at the Arnold Classic. Kai Green Redemption was a satisfying follow-up to Overkill. It further cemented my reputation as a filmmaker and Kai's reputation as a kind of philosophical holy man of bodybuilding. If you are reflective enough and if you're conscious enough to remember, then you realize, nah, you know what? Like, yeah, it's a good thing. For the rest of the summer of 2010, I was editing Kai Green Redemption and continuing to shoot with Rodney Roller as he prepared for the North Americans. Rodney's quest was especially interesting to me because it paralleled my brother's final attempt to turn pro, which we chronicled in Raising the Bar 3. Like Dave, Rodney was over 40 and made up for having not the greatest genetics with loads of hard work. Let's go. Five. Let's do it. Ah. Come on. Ah. Three. Ah. Four. Ah. Up. Down. That's You know, I've never really committed to bodybuilding the way that I've, you know, if I did, probably would have been a pro a long time ago. And it would be happening at the same contest on the same stage. By this time, I was feeling more comfortable shooting bodybuilding competitions, having shot here before and having been doing it consistently for over five years. I knew where to go to get the best shots of the athletes preparing for their moment of truth while staying out of the way of the backstage handlers. The deja vu of shooting at the North Americans came full circle as the winners were announced. Rodney won his weight class, as Dave had done, but then was passed over for the overall and the pro card, just as Dave had been three years earlier. It's funny because he, he contacted me shortly after that show and he was like, you know, I won my class, and then I lost the overall. I said, yeah, do that next year, and then the year after, again, and then come back and talk to me, because that's what I did. That's what happened to me, three years in a row. By today's standards, I would have three pro cards. I won my class at that thing, and now a class win gets you the card. Uh, some shows they give a card to the overall and then another class winner. Some shows give, depending on the uh, division, the top two get pro cards. It's just a completely different thing now. They're giving them away more easily. Back then, you had to either win your class at the Nationals, you had to win the overall at the USA, you had to win the overall at the North Americans. And that's the only way you could enter into, or the overall at the Team U. And that was it. You had to be the overall winner at the show. Late that night, after the show, I checked my phone to find that it had been blowing up with texts and calls from my friend Joe Durney's younger brother, Jim, telling me that Joe was in the hospital. Joe had gotten an infection in his good leg, the one that hadn't been amputated, but neglected to see a doctor about it. As the infection spread throughout his body, he became more and more lethargic, and eventually he slipped into a septic coma. They rushed him to the hospital, but it was too late. At the very moment that I was shooting Rodney lamenting his loss, my friend Joe was dying. By the time I got back home to Pennsylvania, it was over. Joe Durney had been cremated, and there was nothing left to do but go to the funeral. I was angry. Joe was a smart guy, yet for all his smarts, Joe was neglectful of his health. He had bookshelves lined with texts on philosophy and history, but none on nutrition. It was incredibly frustrating to me that I, 
someone who worked in the fitness industry couldn't stop my friend from dying of a preventable disease. I had realized the power of the camera when I used it to get Hector, the Santeria priest, to show his hand and attack me. It was the video footage that enabled us to get him arrested, even though it was not enough to stop him from his campaign of terror. Maybe I could have done more. Meanwhile, the feedback I had been getting from the videos I had made with my brother, Kai, Victor, and other bodybuilders showed me that you can reach people and change their lives with a simple, well-told story. I became determined to use my newfound popularity in the bodybuilding video world to help spread the word about fitness and the health benefits of a positive mindset. With MHP's help, I began to produce a series of videos that celebrated the achievements of men and women who had changed their lives by taking control of their bodies. It was through one of these videos that I became exposed to a new generation of self-proclaimed and aggressively proselytizing fitness experts who would challenge everything we thought we knew about diet and exercise. They think living is something different than an athlete thinks is living. Do you know what I mean? You see that person eating a pizza? That's a bad person. As if they're morally inferior because of the food they eat. Someone makes a living off of lying to people, lying to children in this case. The, the irony is it's the health and fitness industry. Whoever said bodybuilding is supposed to be about health, man? I'd have to say all my shows I've ever done have looked great, but was I healthy? No. I had a heart attack in 2007. People died backstage. There have been people who are completely reasonable people, completely normal people who have exited out the other end with eating disorders. I, I would say yes. That's how you eat 82 ounces of tuna a day. Drink it. That just makes me want to throw up. I think that bodybuilding is, is responsible for curing many, many individuals of, of eating disorders. My anorexia, it will, it will always be there. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to be all right. Forget about me for a second. Let's evaluate the evidence on this question. Have you ever fucking tried it? Why don't you do that first? And if you still think I'm an asshole, that's fine.